Don't forget, shop, pay, installments. That is right. It is integrated into the online law-abiding biker store up on request. You guys wanted it. We brought it. That's right. You can now have the option to buy products right now, knowing that you can pay in four equal payments interest-free. That is right. It's called Shop Pay Installments. It is through a firm. If you're all familiar with that, it works the same exact way. Buy it, and uh, you can make those four equal payments, especially if you need something for you. Head out on a trip or something like that, and uh, appreciate all of you um, that are taking advantage of that in the store. It is there. Hey, Backaholic, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson and a brand new line for the all-new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. Top quality, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug-and-play system compatibility. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com for slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Got a voicemail. Let's see what we got queued up here. Hi, Ryan. This is Ian Campbell. Um, this morning, I was putting a few accessories on my bike, my Zero 3D cup holder and my biker gripper and uh went to adjust one of my highway pegs at the same time while i was at doing all this stuff and uh came to a realization so anyone who's going to buy the cruise tools toolkits might want to consider buying one sae and one metric set and for the reason um i went to adjust my kiriak and highway peg and went to grab metric uh, allen keys and then realized oh wait kiriak is an american company they don't use metric, and so I had to get my SAE set out, and it just made me think, you know, if I was on the highway, I wouldn't have been able to do that Do that if I only had a metric set. Uh, the other reason is if you ever ride in a group or if you ever stop to help someone on the highway, if you're riding a metric and only have metric tools and they ride a Harley, it kind of limits you to what you can do to help them. So it never hurts to have, you know, a little bit of everything that way, uh, if you ever need to help someone, then you have it. So just wanted to throw that out there. Thanks. Bye. Thanks so much for the message. And up on your screens, for those that get this in video format, our members, uh, I'm in the Law Abiding Biker store, and we just got those back in stock, the RTH3. So if you want one, I'd go grab it soon because that's another stock issue that we're having. We I wasn't even aware we got those back in. So um, when they run out, it may be a little while. We've got all those, like he says, good points. Thanks, Ian, very much lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. That's right. He left a voicemail right from his computer or your smartphone for free from anywhere in the world. You can leave us a voicemail. We love the feedback. We love, we got the platform, but uh, here in 2021, we want to ramp it up. We really want to hear your voices, even if it's a funny joke or an attaboy or, or something else, or you have a question, please. We really want to get you guys. We love the emails, but the voicemails are great. We get your voice and personality right here on the podcast. So thanks so much again, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact, email, voicemail, all that kind of stuff over there, guys. Want to ride longer? I do. Mm, are you tore, tired of your sore and achy ass? I am. He is. We're not going to say why Squirt has a no, sore and achy ass. It might be something that has to do... Oh, God. <laughs> Squirt back in the house. It's never going to stop. It's so immature here. We'll fix your tired and sore, key, sore and achy ass with a high quality butt buffer seat cushion. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our lineup of butt buffer seat cushions. Oh, yeah. You know, this will be rolling coming up here in a couple of days on our trip, our California nine day trip. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com for a store. Get hooked up now. There you go. Diving right back into it. Mm -hmm. Episode two of two of an Arizona motorcycle trip. And boy, Popeye in the hot seat. Squirt here. Go back to episode one because you're going to catch up. What day are we on in episode one? Like five? Three. Three. Was it three? <laughs> I think it's like four, 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 five, something yeah. like that. We got off track. Not going to lie to you. I think it was four. Eh, I'm somewhere there. Not going to lie to you. We got off track like usual. But we're having fun. This is just bikers talking biker stuff. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority of the Big MM, also known as the 99 Pocinos, baby. There you go. Large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history by being here, by listening. Whether you like it or not, we know you like it. You're part of what we call the hashtag. Biker Revolution. 
Oh, there you go. There you go, guys. We do have just one question before we get started. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Mount up and let us take you on another wild ass ride. Mm-hmm. There you go. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast and your Hi Tech Redneck. Oh, yeah. We're just going to. Yeah. What do you say? I don't know. Low tech. Low tech. <laughs> Low tech. <laughs> Is you calling me or Popeye that? I don't know. Matt's not here. So. <laughs> Low tech redneck. Low tech redneck. Oh, I love it. All right, guys. So we are going to dive back into it here. We got just a couple things up front you'll want to know about. New free video, which we try to announce when we can. Been out for a while. It is a uh, on the YouTube channel, the Shoei Neotech Helmet Tint Visor Replacement Tutorial. I had to replace the visor on my police Shoei Neotech because uh, I scratched it all up and uh, did a tutorial on that. So if you want to know how to do that, there is some uh, tips and tricks I can show you to get that bad boy replaced. Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash whatever episode number this is will be the show notes. I'll put a link in there. You can always search the website or the YouTube channel for Shoei Neotech Helmet or Tint Visor. Of course, you would come up with the results. Both have great search functionality. Uh, it's usually quicker to just go over there, guys, and search for it uh, rather than email us, but we will answer you, uh, but you can find it yourself using those search functions. Of course, we love our sponsors up front. These people are also a direct result on why these episodes continue to come at you year after year, eight and a half years, and uh, never missed a year, guys, just coming at you with content. So we want to thank some of our newest, beloved patron members. Thanks to these guys for putting a little fuel in the law-abiding tank. David Munyon of Averville Park, New York, top-tier member. And Steve Hagen of Madison, South Dakota. Corey Luke of Box Elder, South Dakota. Yeah, got Joe Fox of Oregon, Ohio, top tier. John Clover of Spanaway, Washington, right here in Washington with us. Mm-hmm. Paul Gregory of, yeah, I don't know how to announce that. Che- Cheektowga, New York. Cheektowaga, New che- York. Cheektowaga, That's New what York. I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Chris Durer of Greenville, Ohio. Thomas Gillette of Syracuse, New York. John Yates of Lander, Wyoming. Then you got Richard Neckerman of Battle Creek, Michigan. Havin Morrison of Branson, Missouri. Joseph Dazio of Pueblo, Colorado, top tier. Lawbitingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P A T R E O N. Pledge a certain amount, purpose of content, no risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. That's right, there are benefits such as t shirts and stickers. You get into the private Facebook group, which is a troll free zone. Access to live video broadcast and chat. Access to this video broadcast early, months before everybody else is going to get it course access to those pre- podcasts early obviously and then the, those premium videos up on request and finally access to those ride meetup and events like we're going to be doing in california ia coming up here very soon just and, a couple of days mm, i'm excited bro mm-hmm. i'm excited mm-hmm. and just cranking this episode out two episodes one of two this is two of two make sure you go back to one of two cranking this out right before our trip um and this was on uh, obviously, Squirt in the hot seat. There, mm-hmm. welcome, Squirt. This is Squirt, the only guy without music for his intro. <laughs> this is better than music. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and of course, Popeye in the house again. So these two were on the trip, and then uh, uh, Mouse was on there and Mouse, Indian Minnie John. And, John. and then they had their two uh, girlfriend for Squirt and Popeye had his wife. So uh, you'll hear all that in episode one. Now they got some great stories I hear. I wasn't on the trip. I'm just asking the questions and learning about the story, but it sounds like we got some fun stuff coming up here in episode two of two. So let's just dive right in it. We got the ride planner up. We'll be sharing the screen with all of you that patron members that get to see this in video format. We'll be, we'll do, we'll explain it the best we can for the podcast. Of course, uh, listeners will be descriptive about the trip, but uh, nonetheless, uh, again, we'll be pulling up the screen here now and then to show you the map and ride planner and kind of what we're looking at here. So why don't you pick it up, one of you guys, and let's roll. Oh, yeah, Bikeaholic. So right now we're probably about 1,500 miles and we're sitting down in Sedona, Arizona, which was the original, uh, if you want to say, destination point. I was the best man in a wedding down there. And after all of the partying. Mm, here we go. That That's for m- Lurch. May have happened a for little editor. bit <laughs> at, <laughs> uh, in Sedona. Uh, more shots, probably not quite like that. But mm-hmm. uh, so we go to leave on uh, the next morning after the wedding. So we spent a couple nights in Sedona, a couple free days there. Uh, I was at a wedding, like I said, and the other boys went up to Wear Squirt. 
We went to the Grand Canyon. Mm. Was yeah. it grand? It was grandish. Grandish. Ish. Yeah. It's grander than anything I've seen before. We went there a couple of years ago. You North were, Rim. They did the uh, the South oh, Rim. Oh, did you do the South one. Rim? Yeah, we did the South Rim. Mm. It was easiest to get to for us. So. For where you were. Right. Rather than driving all the way around, decided to do the South Rim. Right. Because we, we were coming from not Sedona. Uh, we stayed a little bit outside of Sedona. We stayed in, uh, it was Camp, Camp Vista or Campo Vista or something like that. Another mm-hmm. city just oh, close uh, by Sedona. Yeah. I think it was Camp Vista, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, it's something like that. 20 miles south of Sedona. We stayed at a casino there just because uh, it was a lot cheaper than staying at the hotels in Sedona. Right. So, right. Yeah. Sedona's Didn't have to deal with the traffic. It's an expensive area. Sedona's expensive. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, after the wedding and whatnot, and after these guys went up, got to do a little touring up there in um, at the Grand Canyon. Kick stands up at nine o'clock. I think it was for what day was this? This what? must have been in day. Well, well we had a we had hold a hold on here, air squirt. Uh, oh, this must have been day five. So we're sitting on day five, okay. and like I said, I think it was kick stands up at five. And what time do we probably get out of there? Uh oh, kick stands up at five. Kick or, excuse me, sorry, to be seven. sorry, no, no, seven no, no, nine. 30. I think it was oh, yeah. nine or yeah, something yeah. like that. Nine. Probably didn't get out of there till uh, noon. Eleven thirty ish, fashionably yeah. late. Oh at, yeah, at it was. It was time. probably eleven. I would bet you. So yeah, it was, um, I was hurting. It was, it was like rough. I said, I uh, I was at a wedding. Um, I was already drinking, and then all my buddies, because I had a lot of buddies there, and they keep coming around, want me to take shots with them, and I'm real good at saying no. Right, Popeye's good. really good at. <laughs> Just no peer pressure, no. just twist, just yeah. twist your arm. So I uh, kept having shots with the guys, but uh, I was up, ready to go. Bike was packed, and I showed up at the casino that uh, these yahoos were staying at, about 15 to 20 minutes away from uh, the resort that I was at. Uh, started getting on group me, which we use, or actually I think that one was just actually a text message, wasn't it? Yeah. might have been a text string, and I was you, like, where the hell are text. you guys? And they're like, are you already at the bikes? Like, yeah, kickstands up is nine o'clock. And they're like, uh, well, Mouse is still in bed. And uh, he, he came to bed uh, at five. <laughs> let me, okay, let me back this up. We, we got to back up a, a day too, you though, do, because I'm, I want to know whose fault. This sounds like well, a group Ed, fault. Mouse, I, was gonna, I thought it was going to be Popeye's fault, but Mouse no. had okay. a debacle on day four. Yeah. So explain this. Yeah. Day three. He had his handlebars come loose when he hit a pothole. So when we're outside of Sedona, about an hour and a half, his handlebars are loose. He can't figure out how to get them tightened. Um, I was thinking we're going to have to take the whole headlight off and everything to get to the top clamps on his Road King. I think he has like a 20. A Road King's a lot easier King. Yeah, right. than the full fairing bikes. Right, but he had the headlight that has. He's got the big bezel. Yeah, the bezel that Yeah, covers, you do have to take it off. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh so we tell him if he can make it to the hotel, we'll try and figure out the hotel. Uh, we ended up not figuring out the hotel because he didn't want to tear his light apart. Um, so the next day he went to Harley Davidson Flagstaff. Dude, he could have did this himself with the, we've did this to Justin's bike right. in Sturgis with a cruise tools right. kit Mouse on a full ferry. Yeah, Mouse he, is not very he did, but he's mechanical. With us. Okay, okay. I know exactly. So, right? Mouse also, so Mouse also didn't have a cruise tool kit. Oh, geez. And he is oh, with. Geez. Don't leave home without it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's with me and John who both have cruise tools kits. But we both ride Indians. Mm-hmm. So not a whole lot of help. Right. Right. Because you got the metrics. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he decides he doesn't give a shit about tinkering with it. He just doesn't mind spending the money. Dude, this is horrible. I wish right. he was here. I would have him on the hot seat. Are you freaking care <laughs> so, to pay a dealership to tighten your bars? Right. So he, uh, That's he rides up to Flagstaff Harley. Just north of where we're at. How do you get patched in? Jesus Christ. What, are you guys, what kind <laughs> of show are you guys patch. running? Bulls Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, get, gets the, the guy essentially says, oh, you don't even need to take the headlight off. You don't have to take any of that bezel stuff off like you thought you did. If you just pop the 
ring off that holds the ignition and pops the oh. little cover p- plate, you can get to the back two bolts. You can reach up in there. Right. It's kind and, of blind, isn't it, a little bit to do that? Uh, I can't remember how much it exposed. It's been a while since I worked on a Rogue King. I don't know. Uh, Mouse said it took the dude all five minutes. Oh, and God, like, dude. And dude just tightened it. It was like, okay, you're good to go. Like, how much make did you charge trip. him? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much he charged him. It'll be a minimum I don't think it was like an hour. Yeah, right. I, I, think he, I think he hooked him up. I think mm-hmm. he gave him a pretty good deal. I don't think he charged him a lot. Um, I know he, he ended up buying a shirt, so he paid like two hundred percent. He paid ninety nine percent of markup on a shirt, so they got their money out of him. Right, right. Whether he paid it in service for your t shirts, right? Harley, exactly. Harley still won. Yep, always, always. Yeah. That's embarrassing, dude. You guys couldn't talk him out of that. You guys didn't <laughs> he, even he try to help off, him. He took off. Well, we didn't well, have. You have tool, that's right. You had the we didn't metric have tools kits for him. That's right. H- had we had a tools kit that would have fit it, like he had, he had a cruise tools kit, I would have done it in the parking lot, but. My tools didn't fit his, so had he would have if he would have been with well, us. There you go. We like all the last uh, Patreon was just saying have both metric exactly. and standard. That's a good point. Yeah. See, and that's why. Yeah, if well, you want to help people, I'm not responsible <laughs> for my buddies. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It, that's how it depends how much you want to help people in your group or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not going to pack your shit hey, for you. Benefit the law abiding biker store. Buy the kit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Mouse. No, oh, they're good. Yeah. God, they're definitely. Dude. They are. I've used mine multiple times. Yeah. But uh, so he goes up there, gets that done. We meet him up there. Um, we ride up through Sedona, which was fun. Is a through this place called Oak Creek. Beautiful ride. Um, I would never do it again on a Saturday in May. Really? Because it took an hour and a half to go ten miles through Sedona. Why is that? Uh, there's a shit ton of traffic and nobody knows how to use roundabouts. Yeah. 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 Sedona yeah. is full of roundabouts. Yep. Is it's it? Like it's like every block roundabout. Roundabout. They roundabout. like them, huh? Yeah, there's Dang, multiple yeah. roundabouts. People suck at them. Basically, from right. March to, I think it's like, uh, or maybe April. April to like end of May, June-ish or something like that. It's the big peak uh, right. tourist season, I think, in uh, Sedona. Yeah. You go other times, it's probably not so bad. So so for us to go, I think it was like 42 miles. But hold, hold on here. The nice, thing in Sed- up. the nice thing in Sedona is they have bike lanes on the side. They got the they got little symbols that say like this this lane is welcome for bikes. Not for bikes or for motorcycles. It's supposed to oh, be. Oh, is that what they are? It's supposed <laughs> to be pedal <laughs> bikes only. Asking. But uh, is it? Oh God, dude. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, and all I, right, and, I'm tracking. I was like, is this something new that I haven't seen? Like, is it really for motorcycles? All right, never mind. Oh, I, thought you, <laughs> <had> <laughs> been, I thought they were for motorcycles. That's yeah. the way I use them. Had it been I got me you, and dude. Popeye, we'd have probably just blasted through the bike lane. But it was me and uh, John. That's and how I ride it. John's a little more conservative with his riding style, so mm-hmm. I had to uh, not leave him behind. Yeah, uh, but yeah, nice, it, yeah, for 42 miles, it took us like two and a half hours, Ugh. and it was an awesome road. Like I would have loved to ride the road like on a Wednesday when there was no traffic, nobody around. Curvy road right along a. Uh, like a little creek right out of Sedona, headed north towards Flagstaff through yeah. So the red rocks I don't, and trees. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what, what the number of the road that is that you're talking about, but they're in Sedona. There's basically two ways to get into Sedona. You come out of the south, and it'll hook up uh, back with Highway 17, or there's another road that kicks off up at the north of Sedona, and it would take He's you breathing all. Yeah, get off Jesus yeah. Christ. My bad. <laughs> Dude. He's thinking about that hotel room again. Sounds um, like <laughs> that, uh <laughs> Uh, that'll take you back up to um, uh, Highway 40. And that sucker follows right along the river. Uh, very cool road. Um, that might be it there. Where was that Sedona? You were just at that number six? Yeah, number it's, six so, is Sedona. Yeah, if you hit up uh, number six, eh, I don't know if that was it. It's right. 89A. Okay, yeah. Beautiful road. I mean, it's curvy as hell. Um, runs along the river. But, yeah, if you go... Um, Boy, certain times you're obviously a lot of traffic. I may have gotten a little upset and passed about 50 cars through <laughs> that area. Um, but Super touristy place. Huh? Oh, it, yeah, it can be. For Never sure. been there. A lot of people. So um, basically the moral of the story is, yeah, after uh, Grand Canyon, uh, after the wedding. Um, is that his first time seeing Grand Canyon? Uh, no. Okay. I'd been in the Grand Canyon when oh. I was younger, oh, but it had been like a long time. Was that it? Was that Mouse's first time? Or I anybody? think it was Mouse's um, first time. I think I don't remember if, if Indy and John had been there before or not. Too. I think Indy and John had been there. Okay. I think might have been the first time for Mouse. Okay. There's, sure. there's several firsts, like first states and whatnot, for other you know for several of the guys on this trip who had not been to some of the states and and whatnot. Nice. Um. So yeah, uh, got out of there. Like say, 
uh, out of Sedona for me at a decent time, get down to the casino, which is 20 minutes south, ask the guys where the hell they're at, and they're like, yeah, we're You're not, we're not going anytime real soon. Like, you guys kidding me? <laughs> you so, know? Yeah, again, um, sort of backtrack on how yeah. we ended up in bed so late. Uh, I can we, already guess, but go ahead. Right. So, <laughs> wasn't me. I wasn't there. We got back. <laughs> we, we took the long way back from Grand Canyon. We okay. Had, uh, went to the Grand Canyon, came back, did lunch in Williams. It's an old Route 66 town uh, right there, right at the cutoff for the South Rim. That is Grand a very Canyon. cool town. It is cool. What is, what is it? So Williams, Where? Arizona. Okay. Yep. Um, so we stopped for lunch there and then worked our way back west and then south. We went up through Prescott Mm -hmm. or Prescott, whoever you talk to. Is that right? If you talk to people from there, it's Prescott. Oh, really? Um, Yeah. And then through uh, Prescott Valley and in the back way through Jerome. So if you ever get a chance to ride that, that's an awesome road. It's the road that goes from Prescott Valley to Jerome, Arizona. Yeah, Jerome's a cool town. Old mining town as well. Goes up the side of a hill. Uh, a bunch of switchbacks and whatnot get you up. Is this uh, on the right the planet? Towns at? No. It is not. So this is all stuff that we just kind of spitballed. I've, I've we ridden were. it before. Before okay. they were not there. What yeah. is it from where? From uh, Pres- Prescott? Pres- yeah, Prescott Valley to, yeah, Jerome. Jerome, Arizona. Okay, let's just pull it up. I'm going to put it show you guys the screen here and, just, uh, and jerome is uh it's an old mining town super steep um we're yeah. going from prescott to where Jer- jerome, jerome yeah. with a j yeah yep. there you go so okay. jerome they essentially built it into the side of a mountain yeah so there's no like flat spots in the town and it's that, starting to slough off right is this the highway the city uh um, would that be it so right there where you see prescott valley yeah it's from there and then to the right where right up here in Jerome. Yep. Yes. Okay. So All switch back to somewhere up down here. Yeah. And okay. it goes up into, yeah, it's like a, it's a mini mountain pass. Yeah. I see that. Uh, and it's just switch Twisties, back, switch look at back, that. switch back, mm-hmm. switch back for like 20 miles. Nice bro. And we hit it right at the perfect time. Um, we hit it probably seven at night. So the sun was kind of going down, but it's still light, but the traffic was light. There was only one other car on the road and there was one motorcycle. Nice. So we were able to go as fast as we wanted, do it as much as we wanted, um, up until the very end where some dude had a 40 foot motorhome, like wedged in a hairpin corner mm. and was doing like two miles an hour. Oh, dude. So that was, that was kind of a pain, but, uh, coming into Jerome, we didn't stay in Jerome. It was getting dark. We wanted to go home, um, cruise back to the casino when we get back to the casino, we decided to start have some drinks at the bar. No, no, never. No. <laughs> so we have a few drinks. Sound reasonable yeah. at all? Nope. So we have a few drinks. Uh, we're hanging out at the bar. At the cheap casino. drinks. Yeah, it, they weren't cheap, but they weren't super expensive either. Uh, it's called the Cliffs Casino mm. in uh, Verde Village. Oh, I thought you were talking about at the uh, at the casino that you were at. You said those ones were cheap. Yeah, they they were cheaper. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cheaper than a regular bar. Mm. Uh, and so we're hanging out there, having some drinks, and there's a wedding that's going on at the casino at the same time. So there's like a wedding group that's probably like 100, 150 people who are in the bar as well. Wedding crashers. We didn't crash any wedding. They, <laughs> they started like coming up to us. And uh-huh. So they're all probably drinking. I saw that mustache. We're like, whoa, oh, yeah. look at yeah. this guy. Get yeah. him over here. I Official. want a mustache ride. Right. I want a mustache ride. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 They thought they had seen me on some kind of website before. Yeah. <laughs> Do I know you from somewhere? Uh, but so we, we have some drinks. Uh, we stay there till like two, three in the morning. Nice. Close the bar down. Uh, as we're headed back to the hotel from the bar in the casino, short little walk, go up in the elevator, get off on our floor. Sure as shit, there's like 50 people from the wedding party at the room right next door to mine. Oh, yeah, and nice. So they're like, hey, come in here, have some more drinks. Nice. So we go. No. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I went in Well, there. I shouldn't. Re- <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> me and me and Krista, my girlfriend, we go in there and we have like one drink and then it was, it was kind of weird. A lot of these people had come for this one wedding, but they weren't friends. They call it, they all knew somebody in the wedding. Yeah. But they didn't know each other. Uh-huh. So it was like a real awkward setting. And I was like, Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm good. I think I'm out of here. Yeah. So we leave, go to bed. Well, 
old mouse decided to stick around. He stayed out. there? Yeah. He did. Huh? Mouse was yeah. getting it on. So we wake up at eight or whatever uh -huh. and uh, start showering, getting ready. I'm thinking about going down to breakfast and I'm like, oh. Because you're John. in at like four from the timing here. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, it's it probably more like three. Three, okay. Yeah. We didn't stay long. Uh, no, no. You were in bed at a decent time. <laughs> De <laughs> decent ish it, Shit, I, I, really? I at least got i at least got six hours of sleep but uh right i send john a, a message i'm like hey uh you want to go down and grab some breakfast i knew that this guy had been at a wedding because i'm like oh he's probably gonna be fucking late too yeah he, i know how he drinks professional yeah and uh no he's probably in bed at midnight <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. so so uh he's like yeah we can go get breakfast. He goes, but uh, I think Ray needs to sleep some more. He just stumbled back in the room at like five forty-five. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> and he stayed by himself. Yes, which is yes. awesome. He dude. stayed by himself. And uh, Joel's like, he, he, I think he's still like really drunk. He needs to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and about the same time, he sends me a message. Goes, hey, I'm here. Where are you at? Kickstands up ten minutes. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, I don't think we're going to make that. Got us a situation over yeah. I was not happy. <laughs> I, I go, you should probably uh, come inside and just come to breakfast with us. We'll give Ray some time. Oh, my God. Because you, what kind of day did you have here? Going this? to Tombstone, Arizona. And that's but probably, what that it, was kind of the reason why I yeah. wasn't real happy. I'm like, dude, why don't we go freaking spend some time in Arizona? Or, uh, excuse me, Tombstone. Tombstone, no <laughs> shit. Yeah. It wasn't a long day. Five no, hours, it, yeah, six not, hours. Not too bad. 350 miles, yeah. it looks like. But in the, you know, the plan was we'd leave early enough to where we'd get down to Tombstone, relax, you know, maybe find a little saloon or something. That, yeah, right. You know, Doc and uh, the boys had had some drinks at and have a couple drinks for ourselves but the, no 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 we, the we best plans are hell. made for breaking so first <laughs> mouse doesn't yeah. have his it takes his bike to a dealership to get handlebars tight and doesn't have a cruise toolkit and now making the crew late dude yeah, god damn it just yeah. these guys get off probation they think they just yeah. can do whatever they right, want they're exactly. gonna have to start pulling patches <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was their party yeah, yeah, i just like party yeah that'll happen so yeah. uh finally kick stands up out of the casino Start heading south. The worst, uh, the worst part about it was we get down into freaking getting excited. Is he breathing in the mic? <laughs> he is a get, he's uh, a heavy breather. Getting, he's kind of scaring yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> <It's> uh, creepy. <laughs> we we uh, we pull out of the casino there. Start heading south, and uh, we get down to Phoenix. And shit, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. You don't say. About on the temp, I think on uh, on my bike, I saw about ninety eight. Oh yeah, and, it's hot. God dang it! And so. Every one of us is hung over, you know, and that's what the worst part was, right? Everybody's dehydrated, hungover, dehydrated Speak for yourself from the night before. He was Squirt in wasn't as bad. Yeah. He's at three. He got a full night's three, sleep. And I only drank Coors Light. It's 95% water. <laughs> that's true. 98. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, we were dropping my wife off at uh, the Phoenix airport there. She was going to head back. Oh, she's yeah, back. Yeah, she flew back north. And then so uh, Squirt's old lady was thinking about flying back at that point, too. And she'd really been him and hunting. This is like the Cause she's just jump tired off of this. point or not. Yeah. Her ass is hurting, her back's hurting. And, you know, yeah. and so. And, and this is the point of no return. Yeah. It's kind of like, hey, this is your only major airport. Mm -hmm, gotcha. You can either hop off here and, and book a flight and go. Or you're stuck. Yeah, you're, right. You're making the whole trip. And she was hurting. She was complaining. This was kind of, she was hungover too. Mm -hmm. She was she was a lot worse off than me. Her and Mouse were uh, about equal parts hungover. Both of them riding around on their bike, on the bike with uh, their modular helmets open because they think they're going <laughs> to throw up off the bike. Oh, the jeez. Mm -hmm. But it's hot as shit too, and you're putting through Phoenix. Uh huh. Uh huh. But she ended up to, uh, she tried to st stick the trip out. She yeah. did, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She so said, I'm not leaving. It was the plan to drop my wife off. We had the kids at home and whatnot. We had the kids with the neighbors. And so had to drop her off to get back north, uh, take care of the rest of the family. She's a responsible one in the relationship. So she Could had have figured to, that. Yeah. She had <laughs> same, <laughs> she, same she had with this household. Do. Don't, don't have kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and I was worried about this getting into Sky Harbor. Uh, that's the airport there. I'm thinking, shit, you know, the four of us were going to get split up, but told the guys coming in, hey, stay nice and tight. And we did, you know, just um, stayed nice and tight as a group coming into there. Everybody let us in and out. Uh, nice. And we were tight riding this one unit. And so in and out of there. Uh, and on our way, no debacles, no problems whatsoever. 
your best friend on the Segway even commented on that. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the Phoenix uh, cops that was there at the airport uh, said something about, yeah, she's like, like you guys are uh, like a big deal or something like that. She's like, people are making way for you or something. It's like, yeah. we go to pull in and out and people are just stopping and letting us in. So it's pretty nice. Yeah. You don't find that everywhere. No. Jesus. So pull out of Phoenix, um, start uh, heading down towards Tombstone. And this is where I about met my maker. All right. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. After this time. Hey, Bike Alex, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Zero 3D has the products you dream about for your bike, of course. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Hardy Davidson and the Honda Goldwing. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome, black parts, lighting, and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing and more time riding. Mm hmm. Zero 3D has a design team of riders with over 40 years experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. If you got a question, get in touch with them. Email sales at zero3d.com. Give them a call 715 808 0027. Check out your local Hardy or Honda dealership and ask for Zero or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged. So check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for the all new Honda Gold Wings. Mm-hmm, better yet, Help support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com for slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. We are shipping them all over the place. And we uh, definitely appreciate your support shopping in the Law Abiding Biker store for your Zero stuff, guys. All right. So headed to Tombstone. Headed to Tombstone via Tucson, Arizona. We uh, go to pull off uh, to get some gas there in Tucson, Arizona. And I'm getting held up by a fatality accent there in town. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. We, we got a big old jam here on the five. Now we're going to have to slow mm. down there. Um, so, yeah, we go to pull in and there's cops everywhere. I thought there's a shooting or something, but apparently I see it was a fatality accident. Um, and so we kind of have to divert and after we got gas and I got to tell you, man, uh, maybe there's a different part, a uh, different part of Tucson. That's not a shithole. Um, <laughs> but I'd ran into some people that were from Tucson at, uh, I think it was up in Moab or something a couple nights later and I asked them, I'm like, is all of tombstone a shithole? <laughs> and they go, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And then I asked, uh, I was at some training like a week later, uh, after or two weeks later, after I got back from this. Asked the same thing from guys that were down from Arizona. They live in Phoenix. I'm like, is Tucson just a shithole? And they said, yeah, Tucson's a shithole. So if you're from Tucson, or tu- no, Tombstone, sorry, Tucson. Yeah, Tucson, yeah. So I- if you're from Tucson, I apologize. Uh, these guys said your place is a shithole. But right. that's the word I'm being given. Is it given, this one so. right here? Yep, yeah, Tucson. That's T- how you, I always forget. Yeah, Tux, I always forget. Yeah, that's yeah. how you pronounce so it. Yeah, I'm Tucson's a whole, like, say we divert around this fatality. We go to uh, a Walgreens to use the bathroom. I picked up uh, some ice cream for the group. Had some uh, like ice cream sandwiches or something. And then, you know, I think I had a couple and uh, Squirt had a couple. We passed them out to the rest of the group and we still had a couple left. So we gave them to this tweaker chick that was standing there. Nice. For her to have because uh, it was hot out. She mm-hmm. shared it with her dog. Yeah. Helping the tweakers. Well, yeah. you guys are so nice. Such then nice guys. Back on the highway and from uh, Tucson down to Tombstone. Uh, holy shit. I'd, uh, I got close on this one. He yeah. almost died. I did. No <laughs> was, shit. Oh yeah. So we're 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 bombing along, and uh, you know we're doing the speed limit is like eighty. So we're doing eighty five ish. You know, bombing along left hand lane, and I'm just kind of, you know, sitting back in my seat, one hand on the bars. I got my right hand up on the bars. Uh, squirt caught it out of the corner of his eye. I did not, but a big old dust devil. Oh, and it's like real deal dust devil. Uh, hits us, and it absolutely threw me off of my lane track over the white fog line. And I just like, just, you know, quick instinct. I just shoved, uh, back towards into my bar and swerved back up onto the road. But I, it damn near blew me off the road. I was all the way over on the It shoulder. only hit you. Uh, well, he grabbed it, it. It got me too, but it came out of like a trailer park, like a shithole trailer. <laughs> no, park. dude, this is awesome. <laughs> you can't so make like, this shit up, it's, dude. It's like a, like, South of, south of Tucson, right there down is commonly known. Was there a the couple worst. toothless tweakers in it too? <laughs> oh, spinning around, uh, dude. Uh, probably, Dorothy and so Toto, probably, some hookers. Just but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, we were clearing a semi in the left hand lane. We're passing it, and I kind of get this look out of the corner of my eye, and it's a fucking tumbleweed, a big one. Yeah, and it's like throwing, and I look over and I see it, and so I brace. 
and it hits me and blasts me over into where he was. The tumbleweed hit you or the tornado? The tornado. Okay. You, you missed had, the tumbleweed. Some of those tumbleweeds freaking take you out, dude. Yeah, and I had braced, so I blew all the way over into the left-hand wheel track. Wow. Looked over at him, and he's all the way practically off the road. What'd the girlfriend think of that? I don't know. She was more worried about the traffic. Okay. <laughs> Weaving in and out of traffic. Yeah. Okay. Shit. That was more yeah. scary. Yeah. <laughs> speed and traffic. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't like the traffic and like the speeds of, you know, what we'd have to do, you know, to go with traffic or kind of right. in and out of traffic and passing and all that stuff. Around she, traffic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasn't a big fan of that. Made her a little nervous. So, yeah. So uh, from there, went down to Tombstone, Arizona, and uh, temperatures eased a little bit. Uh, Tombstone is a pretty cool place. I'd love to go there. I've never been there. Yeah. So tell so, me about it. Uh, went down in and, um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a touristy spot now. Mm, I mean, that's right. what it survives on. Um, they've got like even the streets underneath the old, they've made it look even the, they've made those streets even look old. Like they've put down what gravel onto the streets. Wasn't it gravel? That they, yeah, they put, they put down? like this crushed red rock down yeah. over the pavement. Of like the main street to make it look like okay, it's old timey, right? But the, like it's not, yeah. And the uh, you know they still got the boardwalks up, you know the wooden boardwalks mm-hmm. and whatnot. The old bird cage theater, which was uh, a stand in there from uh, like the Wyatt Herb Doc tomb or Doc uh, Holiday uh, days. Um, what they say, twenty seven or twenty three people killed in there. 20 something people were killed in that side of that thing. Right. Yeah. Something like that. And then there, they said, uh, like 170 bullet holes still in the building. Wow. Uh, documented bullet holes. Yeah. You it's, can... it's one of what, one of only two buildings still remaining in tombstone. That was from the original tombstone before they had the fire of like 1880 something. I didn't remember that. I remember that one or a couple of them were burned down. I remember I thought a lot of the buildings were still original. Yeah, I think they said they they were original, but they're original after the fire. Mm. So the Birdcage Theater, I think, was one that was still the original, and it hadn't been rebuilt. It it had been the original pre-fire, whereas the others had been rebuilt immediately after. So they're still original. They're just original post-fire. Right, And then there was another one that's now a restaurant. I think that was at one point a hotel. I can't remember the name of it. It's a red stucco place right by the the mining museum yeah so the cool thing about that was is that they had shut it down for like 50 years or something the building had just basically been boarded up so when they opened it back up there's all kinds of memorabilia type well memorabilia now but like old artifact type of stuff that were the left in there and then they've turned it into a like a walking museum and it's a self-guided thing to go back into this building and check out uh all the old stuff that's still in there to this day we did not do that it was fourteen dollars, and we're like, yeah, let's go right. do something else. Plus, uh, you're running we, about six hours late. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, we're running late. Exactly. That was fourteen dollars is two beers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, running late, dude. You didn't do we're it. We're all tired. But do you want to do it? Was it Popeye? That looking, uh, looking back, we should have done it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It Just cool. for other bikers that are going down, what you think? Yeah, there, there's like they do uh, nightly ghost tours and stuff. There. Oh, it's, yeah. it's apparently like a, on the register of haunted places for okay. the United States. So you can come back after dark and there's still people there that work that do like haunted tours. That'd be some fun through. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole boardwalk down there, uh, actually when we were there, it was extremely empty. Um, hardly anybody there. Um, really easy just to walk around, but really? you know, the stores were open because they all, this would have been, was it a, it was Sunday a Sunday night. night. Yeah, Sunday oh. night. Yeah, it was like Sunday at 7. Yeah, so I'm wondering, you know, if, yeah, it must be closed early. Uh, but even like Monday morning, nothing was open, you know, when we were leaving. But we left fairly early. So we walked around, kind of looked in a lot of the stores. But even then, it looked like a lot of the stores were, I don't know if they were closed, like permanently or what. But it would have been uh, neat to see when everything kind of was open. Um, but it was cool also just to be able to go walk around, do your own thing without it being crowded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Went and caught some uh, dinner there. Watched some lady fall off her bar stool. Had a little, what do you say, nice. tombstone water? It, big nose cakes. <laughs> yeah, big nose cakes. Yeah, this is the stuff I need to film, dude. This, yeah. Some of this stuff would have been great. She, uh, the goats and this. And yeah. yeah, I could have yeah, did a whole. Fell off her bar stool, and then she's over there freaking puking her guts out, and there's just a big old pile of puke next yeah. to her. Uh, of course, we thought it was funnier and shit. At first, I thought she was like having a medical emergency because she just like all of a sudden fell, boom, <laughs> hit the ground loud, <laughs> wham. I look over, I'm like, huh? Hmm. And the next thing I know, she's 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and the the guy serving us is like, oh, if you want, we can we can find you another table. We'll, we'll try and clean this, but we can move you. We can move you. Because we're like ten feet away from it. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I'm just looking at it going, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah. yeah, you don't know what we do for a living. That's right. Nothing. Exactly. This yeah. doesn't bug we me lunch, at all. We eat lunch next to dead people. Exactly. Like, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't care. And Lee, he called it tombstone waters. Yeah, she had too much tombstone water, uh, but just puking all over the place, laying on her side, put her like in a recovery position. She's sitting there freaking puking her guts out. Um, so yeah. But worth a visit, huh? It is. I uh, gotta go there. I want to do this whole trip. Yeah, but. Tombstone was cool. It was it was neat to go back into a town like that that you know kind of the history from it. Um, and just that wild west period uh just to be able to walk around in there and just kind of where those guys had walked you know pretty neat there's a lot of uh buildings that were still there that uh you know they said like uh that Wyatt Earp had owned or um you know some of these other old west figures had started so it was it was, it was pretty neat to go do that yeah big, big nose Kate's place where we had dinner that was uh Doc Holiday's girlfriend common okay. law wife she was a brothel owner that was mm-hmm. her brothel at the time Nice. There was a you remember entrepreneur. In, yeah, right. I, I right, respect yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, the oldest legal profession. Yeah, right. no doubt. Uh, yeah, right. You remember the basement that uh, yeah. t- that there was like a there's still a basement. So there's like a circular staircase right in the middle of the building. Yeah, right. So middle of the restaurant, circular staircase goes into the basement. It's like a gift shop. But uh, what's down there is apparently that when it was a brothel, they used to have this guy they called a swamper, and he would clean the hotel, the brothel do all the maintenance work or whatever in an agreement to live in this rock formation basement, essentially in like a little cave. And at the time the dude had been living there for like 10, 15 years. He had a pickaxe and a shovel and had just been digging a hole into the ground. He at one point, really? Yeah. He at one point discovered a huge vein of silver. Why was he digging? Because there, that town Tombstone was built on silver. I'm tracking. So and he knew he had an yeah, idea gotcha. that this area is known for silver, and he was stuck in this basement, essentially in the spank like, tank, <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> right, like a slave. He was like a paid slave. <laughs> yeah. So, so he just dug this hole, and they said at one point he found like this big vein of silver and pulled hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of silver out at the time. Wow. Got money for it. And nobody ever saw where the money went or knew where it went. And he died in the basement a short time later. So they are still that shit. wondering where he stuffed that money. Right. Or where he sent it to. It's just kind of cool because. That's a really cool story. Yeah. They keep it barred off. It's got like prison type doors on it. Yeah. And it's, they said the hole's the same depth size as it was when he dug it in the 1800s. Wow. I haven't touched it, so you can't go in there or anything. No, You're just board it you, off. It, it's from me to you, right? And feet, you can look at it. Oh, okay, gotcha. But it's got like a gated door. I'm tracking. Yeah, I got you, barred type. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm tracking. Okay, very um, cool. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. I mean, it's neat to go walk around that town, like so just the history behind it and whatnot. So, uh, the one of our debacles started here. So we get down uh, to Tombstone. We come in that night, and uh, Mouse. Starts talking about that uh, his uh, uh, exhaust doesn't sound right, and that something's leaking. It is. It's loud as hell. It sounds like it's like straight pipe, short pipes, right? You know, just. Mm. uh, It sounds like short shots. Yeah, short shots. That's the word I was thinking for. It's loud as hell. Well, he had broke a a weld in between where he's kind of got. I think it's actually a true um, uh, two into two exhaust. Yeah, it's like a quasi true dual, like Reinhardt. So it. Two into it's, one into two. It's, it's two not, into a though, chamber. It's okay. Not, it, yeah. It's not. It's a two into. It's a two into two, like a true duel, but it almost has like a not a big crossover like expansion mm-hmm. chamber, like a two one two would together, have. Right. But there's like a piece of quarter inch tubing that had been welded in between the two, almost for like support. Yeah. Just to hold the two pipes together, so the true duels didn't separate or shake or vibrate. Or gotcha. Whatever. But. They're not, it's not welded solid. It's welded with a hole through it. So gases can be exchanged through the duels. So okay. It's like kind of a true duel. Yeah, weird. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's a true it, duel with some crossover a little right, bit. Yeah, right, right. A tiny little bit. And what it looked like after he pulled it off there is as the exhaust pulses are going, 
they're exchanging exhaust gases and they're probably a little bit being pushed through that cross. Yeah. And it's just blasting down through there, hitting the other side and superheating the metal. Uh-huh. So the metal is all disfigured, warped, all miscolored directly across from that little cross. Okay. And it just broke, mm. cracked the whole thing. The whole piece of tubing came loose. Yeah. Muffler, everything. The only reason it was still on that his is bike. straight pipes, basically. No, right. yeah. The only yeah. reason it was still on his bike was because he had the two bolts in the rear underneath the bag uh, that was holding it Wow. On. So that's where I started putting on uh, group me for the guys back home. I'm like, hey, um, you know, is this going to mess anything up? How we, you know, anybody got any advice? And I called uh, Oscar. Yeah, did you? Yeah, he's a moto head. Oh, no, I, like, that's who I'd call yeah, too, yeah. Hell yeah, I'm like, hey, what do we got here? And he goes, ah, he goes, you'll be fine. He goes, just, you know, get it fixed as soon as you can. But right, it'll sound like shit. And, yeah. yeah, he basically said, and he asked, is it in front of the uh, O2 sensors or behind the O2 sensors? And I said, it's behind. And he goes, yeah, you'll be fine. Um, and so he's like, you know, it's gonna be louder and shit, but he goes, go ahead and write it. And well, he said, just, you know, fix it, you know, as soon as you can. Mm-hmm. And so at that point we made the determination, Hey, uh, we're going to be heading up to Moab. Let's just wait till we get to Moab. Cause we're going to have multiple nights in Moab and we'll fix it one of those days. So we took off out of tombstone the next morning. Uh, and we rode some beautiful country. We stayed on the Eastern side of Arizona uh, rode up uh, on the eastern side. And what we did is we went from uh, Tombstone, Arizona. We we're heading up to Winslow, Arizona. Um, and, Seven hours, 383 miles, looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, oh boy, where did we start? We uh, Bear Wallow Cafe up in Alpine, Arizona. And I think that's about 8,000 feet, is uh, kind of what you're looking at in there. Yeah. Um, is it, I mean, it's, it's up, a good elevation. Yeah, yeah, it's high. It's eight or nine thousand feet. And the other thing about it is, is, is that we had like virtually no freaking traffic. Uh, we were able to avoid all kinds of truck traffic. Or I mean, there's just there's just no traffic out there. It's great. Um, a lot of uh, it was almost like four surface type of roads or something. Once you kind of, I mean, it, yeah, I don't know we, about that. We, but we actually left Arizona at one point and we're in uh, New Mexico right. for yeah. a while. So there's a loop that goes into New Mexico for a while, which it was fun. Um, if you look at the trip planner, we actually didn't follow that route. I was going to say, cause you're yeah. not that, in that route. There is the route I thought we were going to take, which that route there is, uh, is called the road between Alpine and Safford mm-hmm. there, Safford, Arizona. That's a, that's called route six, six, six. So it's the devil's byway. Yeah. And it's a famous, uh, North South road, um, it's apparently a great motorcycle road. It's kind of got famous ties like the iron mountain road in, in yeah. Sturgis, like black Hills. Right. It's one of those type of roads where, you know, you get to the end on either end and there's stores that are selling t-shirts that say, you know, I road I gotcha. devil's yeah. byway or whatever. Um, we ended up not turning for that one and we went, continued East and went on that road there mm-hmm. through New Mexico which that road was just as good. It, it was, was awesome. Yeah, some good corners, uh, nice steep terrain. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what road that ended up on, Ryan, on your map there as to how we ended up. Maybe 12 here. I don't, it, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's south of where you're at. So like yeah. where I where think, Safford is there. And, uh-huh. and instead of turning north, yep. we just continued east. Right here. Yeah. Yep. And then north from there. Right. Right. Yep. And it was a windy sucker too, so. Uh, you know, maybe not as much as that devil's road or whatever. And maybe that would have been, uh, you know, a little different, but this is a cool way to go. Uh, I don't know how we got off on that one. Um, somehow ride planner got off or, or <laughs> Apparently. something. Yeah. Uh, but ended up being very cool, but Hey, you know, we rode for, I don't know, is what a hundred miles or something, probably New Mexico or, uh, so we're over there riding. And then, uh, before we bump back into, uh, Arizona and like I said, up to, uh, um, uh, bear hollow for lunch and you want to talk about like a good old boy place you know i mean right. it, you know just a bunch of locals and we come walking in and it's uh yeah just laid back good food good people uh this old boy came over and talked to us told us he used to have harley's back in like the what do you say 70s or something like that i don't know he's mostly talking to you guys yeah 70s or 80s i don't know what he was saying but uh yeah about you know just giving us some old stories and whatnot 
uh, and then continued. Is that uh, Bear Wallow? Kind yep, of that's yeah. it right there. Bear, Bear Wallow. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Lee had it on his ride planner, but he couldn't find it. So he pulled over on the side of the road and was like, I'm looking for this Bear Wallow Cafe. I don't know where the hell it is. Look it up on your phone. So I, I Google it on my phone. I pull it up and I go, and I look to my left. <laughs> no shit. It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're, right park, across the we're parked on the right-hand side of the road in the post nice. office and it's across I think it's that one. Nice. So yeah, those of you that use in ride planner, you know that when uh, you're coming up to a spot on it, it doesn't give you if it's on the left hand side or the right, right hand side of the road. It doesn't give you like a picture of what it's supposed to look like. You just kind of address like you're there, and it's especially when you're like in a populated area. It's well, what shit? Where's the address at? You know, and and makes it sometimes a little bit more difficult to find. Yep. Very true. Very true. So right, let's do this real quick. And uh, Squirt's making a run for the bathroom. Oh yeah. Hopefully, it's just the urinal. (laughs) Are you searching for the easiest and quickest attachable luggage system for your motorcycle? It's freaking squirt searching for the bathroom right now. (laughs) Well, Rick Rock has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rock's quick attached strapless luggage rack systems. This father-son team designed something really special you can't find it anywhere else. Yep. And these guys ride, so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack Quick Attach System is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, bikeholics? Head over to the Law Bunny Biker Store and check out our full line of Rick Rack Systems and bags. Rick Rack. There you go, buddy. All right, pick it up there, brother. We're winding down here, winding down. Yeah, still got a little ways to go though. Still this got is... a little ways to go. We're picking up. We'd uh, taken off there uh, from lunch and headed up to Winslow, Arizona. And uh, you know, there was uh, the reason that uh, I had Winslow, Arizona, on the map. It's one of those other places. Really, not a lot out there in that country. So it was a where are we gonna where are we gonna stay type of place. Um, Stayed the night there in Winslow, and uh, a lot of it kind of was because of. Well, let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. Ryan yeah. canceled for copyright. Oh, yeah. He, is, he knows. <laughs> Only his age knows that, dude. That Turn that off. You're going to get me <laughs> a copyright. Are you get in trouble for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not monetizing this video, yeah. so it'll be no big deal. But if you I was monetizing it, Google down. bots will pick it yeah. up and demonetize your video right away. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, stand on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. Um, and um, standing on the corner, yeah, it's awesome, dude. Yeah, exactly, such a fine sight to see. It's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed nice. Ford, slowing down to take a look at me. Um, but uh, Sturgis Jeff had really wanted to go to Winslow. Uh, Sturgis was going to go on this trip, uh, with us. That's what I thought, yeah, yeah. He uh, yeah. had some medical, medical stuff, stuff that had come up, yeah, and so doing was, well, doing well now, though. Yep, he's yep. doing good. So, uh, going with us, yeah, yeah, he's going here with us here in a few days. He'll be on the trip with us, but on this one, he had to cancel, uh, couldn't make this one. Um, and so he had been wanting to go to Winslow, so I'd kind of put it on the map in my mind originally for uh, to get through there uh, with him because he told me it was something he'd wanted to really see, and so that's why uh, it was on my radar. So we're at the uh, the hotel that night, and we're trying to figure out where to go to dinner. And we go and ask the gal because um, I generally on these trips I don't make a dinner uh, plan. I just I make the lunches and whatnot, and what we're going to kind of do for breakfast, and then dinner we'll figure it out when we when we kind of get there. And so I like, said so we ask gal at the front desk, hey, where's a good spot to go for dinner? She gives us a brewery downtown. You remember what that brewery was? I don't remember the name now. Shady's looking up. up. So as we're sitting there in uh, at this brewery that Squirt's looking for, the name of it, uh, in Winslow, uh, I was telling these guys, I said, hey, there's a wall. There's a, like an area around here. There's somewhere in Winslow. Go ahead. It is Relic Road Brewing Company. Awesome place. Freaking yeah. great food, great beer. Uh, this wonderful. was actually one of our best brewery stops, I think. It was fantastic. It was a really good brewery. Um and so uh, we're sitting there bullshitting, um, and uh, t- we took a cab downtown this night. Normally we wouldn't, but it was like seven bucks for a cab from for there and back. We're like seven dollars. Yeah, yeah, we dude. can all do that. Yeah, yeah, they had an agreement for uh, like a shuttle. Okay, so it ran till is what, this it twelve thirty? Yeah, this I'm is showing it. you members that yep. get to see the video of this episode. Yeah, that's, that's cool. the brewery. Oh, yeah, they got so, a the back of a truck there. Yeah. yeah, nice. All kinds of cool uh, cool stuff in there, really cool uh, or really good beers. And so I say I'm standing there looking um, at my phone when we're sitting down waiting to order, and uh, 
I know that there's a place in Winslow somewhere that they have this wall that says uh, Winslow, Arizona, and there's something around, like kind of says something about stand on the corner or something like that. And so I start looking it up and I'm like, I look at square. I'm like, shit, dude. I go, the freaking thing is right there. It's around the corner. It's literally 50 yards away from us. Right. No shit. <laughs> it's got an old uh, flatbed Ford that yep. just stays parked on the corner all the time. And it's got a uh, bronze statue of the lead singer of the Eagles. And oh. then there's a sign there. It's uh, it's almost like a. Uh, is this it? Yeah, that's yep, one. That's there's it. a picture we're showing you guys right now. And uh, so yeah, it's got this flatbed Ford, and then it's uh, it's got a sign is there that's probably like uh, maybe like a, a foot by a one you know one foot by one foot or something like that that says standing on the corner. Um, and then right behind it is this big mural on the wall that says Winslow, Arizona. And so it's pretty, pretty freaking cool. So we, we got some pictures there at night. In fact, I think the pictures at night are better than the day pictures. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me, let me pull up these pictures. I can always just hold up my phone to, uh, your camera. Yeah. There. Yeah. And if yeah. you're, if you want, uh, you know, if you want to put any of the photos from this trip or anything, you know, we could send you some of yeah. that stuff for like Winslow, Arizona in the, show notes. Yeah, in the show notes there. If you want to uh, see any of those, um, hold it steady till it focuses. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's showing up good. So yeah, nice. Uh, that does night, look cool at yeah, night, man. Night, yeah. Pretty cool. It's got these, yeah, these, uh, lights that shine down on it and whatnot, uh, on the, on the mural there on the oh, wall. Oh yeah. So really cool. Um, and so we went and did that in the night and uh, oh, that hang, night. Hang on. Can you hold those up again? I didn't have it on the, sorry to interrupt you, Popeye. Um, nope. Uh, I had it on still. They were seeing my screen. So hold them up again. So he's holding them up to the camera now. Pull focus. There we go. And then what we do, we, we can send a few photos Tonight, of this photo. place uh, to Ryan there and he can uh, put, it in, the show put notes. it in the show notes. So if you guys are curious, there's, I mean, you can Google it too and see them, but you can see at least our photos and, yeah. and, you know, maybe make a trip around this place. Cause it is a pretty cool uh, spot, especially, um, you know, if you know the song and yeah, I kind of put it on Facebook of some pictures and had to laugh. I said, you know, a lot of these people that are under 30 or 40 don't, don't know what the hell you're referencing when you say stand right. on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, but right. uh, yeah, yeah, who yeah, are yeah. the Eagles? Right. We had to, <laughs> where we had to Winslow? for $50. Yeah, we had to play uh, the song for uh squirts girlfriend. She had no idea what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. uh, God, she, that ages she, it, she knew it? what it was. That's like right up her dad's alley for music. She did not, not have any idea. We had to play. She it. doesn't like that kind of music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's like, Oh, that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. So anyway, from uh, we said Winslow that night, Winslow, um, boy, all the way up to uh, next day was to Moab. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a pl- had lunch at a place called Twin Rocks Cafe, which uh, we ended up going through Monument Valley. Mm-hmm. Heard of that? Uh, yeah, never boy, been. I'll tell you what. Uh, if you pull up the road on that, because that's one that bike holics you don't want to miss uh, on uh, the ride planner. Yeah, if you're coming up through that area. Um, you got to make sure that you hit this. Uh, we went through, uh, we cut off, actually, we we're going to go through Flagstaff. We navigated our way just a little bit different. You're up north there quite a bit, This Ryan, is Flagstaff. But, yep, and keep going north quite a ways, all the way up to the border uh, with Utah right, right in there. Right there. Yep. yep. So one of them roads in there, uh, yeah, that stretch right around in there is going to be uh, what Monument Valley is. I just like to get the, the road uh, number. Yeah, there I'll you go. It. It's that one that peels off right in there. Okay. So from Mexican hat, basically you're going to turn north. 191, yeah. 95. Nope, nope, nope. Go back because it's a small section. Oh, it's okay. that section to your left there that peels off. Yeah. There you go. So that is U.S. Highway 163 yep. is what uh, is going to be the main section. It's at uh, Mexican hat. So you're kind of coming up on more mm-hmm. of a main highway. And even that is uh, fairly scenic. But you get off of um, uh, Mexican hat. Uh, the whole area is considered Monument Valley, I guess. Mm-hmm. But once you peel off of Mexican Hat, went that what is that what you remember too? Uh, and you well, take that left there at Mexican Hat because remember there's a bunch of hotels and stuff. Yeah, the actual like what people know as Monument Valley is what they've seen in Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. So like the Forrest Gump point, it's that famous part in Monument Valley where it's the long straight road with the rocks in the, the back. The Forrest Gump part where he gets tired and he's like, right. I'm pretty yeah. tired. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I'll go home <laughs> now. Home now. Yeah. 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 That yeah. is actually uh, south of Mexican Hat in between what is Monument Valley there at the border and Mexican Hat, if I remember right. Okay. It, the road in and of itself is nothing spectacular. It's straight and mm-hmm. long, uh, but the view is worth it. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just a bunch of standing rock formations and whatnot. And then one of the guys I work with, Adam, who's been on the co- podcast before, he was talking about go through there uh, at like sundown when the sun's starting to set. Mm. It says really cool, um, you know, with the uh, the shadows and whatnot going through there. He says it really makes it look cool. Um, so we went through there, uh, saw Monument Valley, pretty cool. I uh, had lunch at uh, Twin, no, it was uh, Navajo Twins uh dry what was the name of that twin twin rocks yeah it's just added up twin Twin rocks Rocks cafe Cafe. okay um nothing special for the food but the view is really good and there ain't a whole lot around there that you're gonna get food at otherwise Uh, the food was good there you guys none of you had had uh indian tacos yeah that place had indian tacos oh yeah Yeah. nice and none of these these guys are all like what are indian how did you not have indian tacos i've never had an indian taco before what's the indian (laughs) but even you guys said it wasn't that great for an indian taco (laughs) no it wasn't it wasn't a it's not a homemade indian taco i i get spoiled because my girlfriend uh she's native american so her mom makes homemade fry bread whenever we're around nice so i get spoiled on indian tacos but they were still good. Yeah, right. Especially for somebody who's never had one before. Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, and it was a very scenic uh, stop Super for, scenic. for lunch. Yeah. So they call Pull it back tw- a little bit so you're back in frame. Yeah, there you go. You just, no, you're good. Yeah, so they call it Twin Rocks Cafe because literally right behind the cafe, probably 50 yards, the cafe is almost built into the rock wall, is two towers, rock towers with like rock perches at the oh, top. Yeah? that are like narrow perched and they're right above the cafe. Wow. Like if one of them decided to fall, it would kill What's it you. called? Twin Rocks Cafe. Okay. Yeah. I was and I got a bunch of photos. I got a bunch of photos here too. I can pull up. Here you go. This is good. They show good shots of it here. Yeah, here we, yep. Here's us parked. Yeah, that's it right there. Oh, okay. You got them up for yep. bringing it up for him. Yeah. I'll just bring this photo up. Yeah. Cool, man. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and one thing about that place, uh, don't go there late because we got there at like yeah. four and they're like, um, we're closing soon. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, close early. Uh, so from there, nothing spectacular, right? All the way up uh, pretty much after we pull out of there, the scenery kind of dwindled just a little bit. Uh, it took a little bit, but there was scenery for a while. Yeah, it just got it got to like kind of high desert. Yeah, mm-hmm. before you get into Moab. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, right. So I so Mo- got flipped off by some dude in a Subaru for passing him on. We made dude pass a, a guy in a Subaru we, we, flipped we, you off. For That's for embarrassing. We we're a tough guy in the Subaru. Yeah, I don't know what his problem. I don't know what that guy's problem was, but we passed quite a few cars in that stretch. Because I bet you did. Yeah, I was ready to get there. Yeah, <laughs> good time. So we were making good time getting to Moab. Got to our place in Moab, which we stayed at for the next three nights. Okay, you spent three nights. Three nights in cool. Moab, yeah. So it was pretty awesome. Next uh, couple of days entailed uh, us going out to, uh, um, what was the name of the so first we did, park uh, we, went, we went and did? Dead Horse State Park. Okay. Yeah, Dead Horse did, is pretty cool. So yeah. Dead, yeah, Dead Horse uh, State Park right outside of Moab. It only takes probably, what, 20 minutes right out to there or something like that. Not too long. Yeah, if that, I think it's like 11 miles yep. from downtown Moab. You get out there, Dead and uh, it, since it's uh, not a national park, I think you're going to have to pay to get into there. Awesome views. Uh, not many people. Can use your parks pass? Huh? No, Kennedy's your it, park's best no, on national. It's a yeah. state park. I got gotcha. you. So it's not a national yeah. park. Uh, gotcha. But it was like 10 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. For a motorcycle, it's like 10 bucks. Perfect. Yeah. So it was worth it. I mean, it was pretty cool though going out there. Not many people there. It was uh, really cool views uh, to get into there. Um, I would say it was worth it for sure. I, I think it was cooler than anything else, like national park wise, or I, th- I think it was cooler than Sedona even. It, Better than the Grand Canyon? Uh, yeah. I think wow. what? The, the Grand Canyon's cool because it's just so big. But, the, right. The, but the Grand Canyon, especially that South Rim, is just so commercialized. Yep. That's There's where we so went to the North Rim. People. I know you couldn't, but yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just so crowded. There's a million people walking everywhere and everything's got rails. Yeah. And yeah. Paths and everything's paved. And it's just kind of like, and the Grand Canyon's almost so big that it's too big. Yeah. It's like almost the Colorado river so far down there. It's almost like, it's not even real. It's yeah. Right. It's just such a big gap that it's not real. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I, I get it. Yeah. That's what makes sense. The Dead horse state park. It got the name from the, the fact that it's like a, it's like a point on a cliff and it crosses a path at one point that's 20 feet wide. Cowboys used to run horses out there, barricade them, 
take the horses they wanted and leave the rest for dead. Ah. And so they'd leave them for, they'd leave these wild horses for dead on this point within view of the Colorado river. These horses would just sit there and, and die. Wow. Cause they're like a couple thousand feet above the river. Right. But it's just right there. The river is right off the, huh. off the cliff edge. That's the name, huh? That's where, uh, Mouse met his uh, Latina girlfriend. Oh, yeah. the- yeah, she loved Mouse, still pen pals. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Raymond. Uh, Ramon. Yeah, Ramon. Ramon. Oh, uh, no. So, uh, Poor yeah. Mouse. Yeah, so anyway, it's worth going in there. It was really okay. cool. Good views. Uh, I would highly recommend that. Uh, from there, we took off, and we rode up to uh, Canyonlands National Park. Mm-hmm. Um, Canyonlands was pretty cool. Once you get in there... Um, Boy, a lot, lot to see. A lot to see. We uh, obviously are on bikes, so you know we're not getting off on some of the uh, off-road stuff that you can do. But boy, if you've got any type of an off-road vehicle or not, or, or excuse me, if you have some type of an off-road vehicle, uh, there is a road that would take you from the very top up um, on the rim of that sucker all the way down into the bottom of that canyon. Um, and that would be cool. Yeah, so one road I've heard uh, from a lot of people who have done that, and they say you can do it on Harleys or, like, touring bikes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not ideal. It's called the Moki Dugway. Uh, Moki Dugway no, Road. No, that's or, something different. That, Bullshit, pre- I just looked it up. I'm pretty sure that's in a Canyonland. Nope, I just looked Are it sure? up. sure? Yeah, because I'm going back uh, down to that area uh, before too long. And, uh, I looked up Moki Dugway. It's a totally different road. Uh, maybe it's in, no, time. you're a mess. You don't well, know what you're talking about. Oh, geez. So here we go. Yeah, See, this, yeah, is what, oh, this is coming at yeah. the end of episode two or two. This the is usually other, how it is. I've been good on him. The, yeah. Yeah. the other road that's down there is, uh, it's like white trail or whatever. What is that's, that? Moki road? Moki Dugway. Moki Dugway. Spell it. Uh, M O K I Dugway. Yeah. Moki. There you go. Dugway, Utah. Yeah. Yeah, watch, see, it's up by Mexican watch, it's, hat. It's going to be the, no, it's gonna be no, the same area. Holy shit, you don't even know what you're talking Look how far away it was. That's oh, not even that far. Well, it's not even near Canyonlands. Oh, that's, it's on my Mexican hat. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, you'd say it. You're wrong. Oh, geez. <laughs> Canyonlands is like right no, just it's north not. of it. it. Only 300 miles north of it. That is not Let's 300 do this. miles. We're going to switch Navigate it. Navigate from. We're showing you the screen here to uh, yeah. Canyon. We're down by Valley of the Gods. We're down in freaking... Uh, we're down in uh, Monument Valley, dude, for Moki Dugway. It's, t- it's three you know, hours. I know this because I'm going miles. down there. Okay. In, yeah. 160 yeah. miles. So yeah, 160 yeah, yeah. miles, yeah. I'm going, <laughs> to, I'm going down there at the end of July, so I looked up Moki Dugway about driving it, so that's how I know. You should do yeah, it. Don't challenge me. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, all right, cool. So, you can't uh, remember half the things on this trip, but the one thing he pulls out of his ass <laughs> is this. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Canyonlands went in there, but yeah, there is, uh, there's a road that like I said, I don't know if, if, uh, squirts look up a number for it or something, but it'll take you all the way down into the bottom of the Valley. And wow. I mean, it is like total switchbacks to get back to, uh, mm-hmm. down to the bottom. Looks like it'd be a hell of a trip. Really cool. Um, so we went to Canyonlands kind of, you know, looked at all the viewpoints, took some pictures, um, Say no hiking for us or anything like that, but uh, went and rode it all. Looked God. at the at the spots. You guys did a lot of stuff. Yeah, I want to do this. And then uh, after there, we uh, we took off and we went over to uh, Arches, which is really only like a half an hour, maybe tops, um, maybe not even that from Canyonlands to get over to Arches. Uh, we got to Arches at like five fifteen in the evening because Squirt and his girlfriend wanted to take uh, pictures when the sun was going down, mm. which was awesome. In fact, dipshit, you still haven't sent dipshit. out all the pictures of all of the stuff from the trip in a file for us. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. I get, you don't have yeah, you're right. I'm a dipshit. I know. <laughs> yeah. So it's not my camera. It's my girlfriend's yeah. camera. So. Yeah. Which you were taking you pictures see. with and you have access to. Um, <laughs> She's just a roommate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to break into her just, room. Yeah. Just a roommate. I put things inside of. He's got to get some of the other pictures <laughs> yeah, off of it first. food <laughs> and love. <laughs> <laughs> love juice. Um, so, uh, yeah, went over to Arches, got in there at like 5, 10, 5, 15. Arches National Park. Arches yeah. closes at 5. Mm. Awesome. No, nope, they close the gate. You're okay. still allowed inside. You just don't have to pay. I right. got you. Now, yeah. most of us didn't have to pay. We either have passes or I've, I'm a veteran. Right. And so I, in fact, Bikeaholics, I've, I I put it on the Facebook page. Here's another little tidbit for you. If you are a veteran of the United States military, uh, if you have a, um, 
uh, a print like on your or something that says on your driver's license your your state id that you're a veteran or you've got a veteran's card you can get into all of the national parks for free mm -hmm. do not have to pay for them and this was something new that just passed i think it was like 2020 so it's something brand new i just happened to be searching for a pass here when uh because we're going to be uh, making our way down through california and we're going to be doing multiple national parks on this trip and mm -hmm. so i wanted to have a park pass and so i ended up looking up uh about buying a pass and just discovered that veterans getting all these things free so kind of a nice little uh bonus uh if you're a veteran like i said it's just something i just discovered here recently so going to Arches and we drive right into it and it's kind of wide open to us. Uh, there is a little bit of traffic uh, as some of the lookouts and whatnot. Uh, we did a little bit of hiking out to some of the arches and stuff, you know, uh, ones that were maybe like, what, a mile away or something, nothing too far. Yeah, we did. The, we hiked to the arch at the very end of Arches National Park. I think it's like Devil's Garden. There's a number of smaller arches out there. Okay. I can't remember the name of any of them. But we hiked out to those ones, and then we went back. Del no, Delicate Arch is the kind of the most famous that you'll see pictures taken of. This was like Landscape Arch or something like right. that. Right. One of them was like uh, Landscape Arch and Hole in the Wall Arch, I think. But Delicate's the one that you'll see a lot of pictures that are uh, uh, taken of. Uh, like I said, that, that one's a couple mile hike to get back into there. So we did not do that just, you know, for the time of it and whatnot. But we went back to some of the ar other arches and whatnot. Got some really cool pictures uh, when night was starting to uh, get closer as the sun was going down. Um, you know, we took several pictures uh, of us up under them. Uh, some really, yeah, just some really cool spot. Um, got back out of there. Uh, went back down into this. You looking for a name of one of them or something? No, I was just looking at the photos. Um, so went the ones he didn't send me yet. Um, and so went back down <laughs> and went back down funny. into town. There was uh, uh, a lot of cool places to eat down in um, uh, Moab. You know, several good places. And then the next day kind of was, uh, hey, what are we going to do? We'd been talking about doing. Um, there's a ride of the. It's like a river road ride that would basically take you up to the uh, north, kind of the northeast of Moab that runs along the river. That's supposed to be a really cool ride, uh, but it's a short one. It's only like twenty or thirty minutes, but it's supposed to be really cool. Or uh, I just happened to have it in my head after uh, hearing a country song singing about uh, was it Blue Sky and Telluride. I can't remember what the exact lyrics are. And hearing about Telluride, Colorado, mm, and I'm yeah, like, it's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I was like, shit, what's this Telluride thing all about? And so I started looking at pictures of it and whatnot, and uh, had thrown it out to the guys early on in the trip, saying, hey, here's a possibility. Let's go over and see Telluride, Colorado. Uh, Telluride sits at about nine thousand feet. It's a ski town, is really what it is. And the, uh, the hills on the side of it rise to about, uh, about 11 to 12,000 foot range. 14,000 feet. So 14 is the highest ones. Yeah. So okay. tell, tell your rides in a box Canyon. So it's the very end of a box Canyon. So there's only one way in. There's technically a second way out. It's called black bear road. Crazy. Considered, yeah. One of the most dangerous roads in the United States. Really? It's a single track unpaved, uh, essentially Jeep or adventure trail right. that goes from Telluride at 9,000 feet to the peak of, uh, I think it's called Red Mountain. Look up that 14, one on YouTube. Feet. What are you, Black Trail, right? There you said? Uh, Black Bear Road. Black okay. Bear Road. So look up on YouTube uh, when you get a chance, Bikeaholics, of uh, Jeep rolls off of Black Bear Pass or Black Bear yeah. Road, uh, and there's this Jeep that comes flipping off of this uh, the, I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. switchback mountain pass that is, I mean, it's as damn near as you could get to straight up and down uh, for a road to be going on. It's crazy. Yeah. As you come into town, you can see it off in the distance. There's still snow on it, and it's... it's switchbacks uh, going up the side of the hill in front of you. 50, okay. 50 switchbacks, yeah. and each one's maybe a quarter mile long. Quarter mile, quarter mile, quarter wow. mile. Wow. And yeah. apparently it's only wide enough to fit like one vehicle each way yeah so you get to the corner you have to like radio make sure nobody's coming then proceed down to the next corner if you go youtube the video you'll see yeah. what we're talking about it okay. is only wide enough for one vehicle to go through at a time uh it'd be fun like on a uh, a dual sport or something like that adventure bike yeah. to go ride this thing a lot of switchbacks it's i mean it is absolutely crazy um so tell you right itself, super expensive town. Um, but we were kind of trying to decide, you know, what to do that day. Like I said, free, free day to ride up to there. And so, uh, we, 
threw it on the on the map there and from Moab out to Tell Ride, it was only a couple of hours. What was it? Two mm-hmm. and a half hours or something like that. Two and a half, three hours to get out to there is about yeah. what it was. I think it was about two six hours, hours worth of riding. And so uh, we said, you know what, hell with it. And I'll tell you what, man, is my take on it. And like I said, I'm going on a vacation here, um, you know, another month or two uh, down a lot of this kind of the same area. And I told my wife, I said, there's just so much country out there that you could compare to the national parks without getting into the national parks. And for me, this was one of them. Is that when we left Moab and started riding toward Telluride, absolute amazing scenery mm. amazing switchbacks you know some high mountain stuff some uh ranch you know big ranches that have probably been in the family forever and the other thing about this is is that this is right it's adjacent to the million dollar highway uh-huh. basically all you you're on the other side of the mountain range from uh the million dollar highway which um you know if you if you bikeaholics go look up the uh the, the the ride that we did to the midwest ride there's a good section uh that ryan had filmed of us going up over the the uh, million dollar highway which includes you know Ore, silverton um yeah, what was the other uh, little town in that area but or well, started silverton, durango and durango jump over the top to, yep. yeah uh-huh. and so this is basically right on the other side of the mountain range so the road that squirt is talking about that switchback road that goes up and over top of the mountains will actually end up dropping you off over into the million dollar highway yeah, okay and so you can drop off over into that region uh by uh dirt roads if you know obviously if you had a vehicle or a bike uh mm-hmm. you know some type of adventure bike to get there so it's up in that type of train you know just super scenic super awesome um but it's one of those areas like i said for me i'd rather go ride that with zero traffic there's no trucks out there really didn't even run into many vehicles along a lot of that stretch right that that whole stretch from la salle to natarina right there mm-hmm. is beautiful it's why the la salle area la salle is a big mountain so that's a huge mountain right there mm-hmm. so you kind of skirt around the mountain gain a bunch of elevation uh have a pretty good cool switchbacky little ride and then as you make that drop down there uh it towards Nat Arena, it drops you into a valley, like you're saying, with the ranches and just it's straight and long and these big, huge ranches that you can tell have been out there for forever. Old mm-hmm. houses and just people running cattle. And for me, if you gave me the opportunity, said, you know, like now, especially having seen what I've seen, if, if you're going to Moab, would you rather ride up to Tell You Ride or would you rather go, go ride arches? Uh, I'd probably just say, let's just go to tell you, right? To avoid the people, mm-hmm. um, the time of day and squirts over here, Don has had an agreement, but the time of the day that we went was good for arches. However, the next morning we leave Moab and when we leave, it is four, five, six lanes wide. Yeah. And it's five miles backed up at the well, gate. Well, no, five miles, but it's, mm, it is close. from the gate. It is backed all the way up to, uh, the intersection going into the park I mean, you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cars that are just stacked into there in the morning. We were kickstands up at eight or eight thirty, right? Yeah, and, and that, it's already packed. Yeah. So we got lucky in that you know we accidentally you know we drove in at like say five o'clock in the evening, able to drive right into Arches, uh, go see what we wanted to see, get around easily. Not a lot of people, um, but if like I say for some of these places, it's boy, uh, even like where we skirted around last year on our way out to. Uh, um, um, the big motorcycle rally. <laughs> so when Sturgis. we went through uh, Yellowstone, like no kidding, we went through uh, Yellowstone there, and as soon as we got outside of Yellowstone, awesome scenery. Yeah, it's not Yellowstone, but amazing freaking scenery. It's like, yeah, eh, which one would you rather do? Go ride, you know, some amazing scenery outside of Yellowstone, and then get up to Beartooth Pass where we ran into hardly any traffic anybody yep. up there would you rather do that or go ride through the middle of a national park at 10 miles an hour behind bumper to bumper was, traffic yeah except right. for that one dude on uh uh bear tooth pass that refused to get over for us yeah right there's yeah. always one of them yeah. <laughs> Let's go we're gonna re- yeah, give me in the next three days you know when we kick off this trip we're gonna run into that two down on the 101 and the yep. one yep exactly yeah, it's gonna be the same damn thing get pissed off people for driving slow so but so uh yeah i would rather go ride some of these other places and some of these national parks Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you can get outside of them, there's just as much to see bikeaholics, uh, kickstands up, like I said, eight or eight 30 the next morning, heading North okay. and, uh, hold it there, hold it there as we wrap this up. And you know what you could probably use? Cause we were putting on some serious 
mileage on these times. And I'll tell you what, you get a sore and achy ass at times. And I'll tell you oh. what, I think I know what would probably help on one of those. Good God. Right on freaking cue. That's right. You want to ride longer and treat your ass with some respect already. Get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. That's right. This company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade seat cushion made of solid and elastic materials. And it's unlike gel pads that will leak if punctured. I bet Squirt's girlfriend about this time could have used one of these. Mm -hmm. The butt buffer is too cheap. It's a cheap ass. The butt buffer is designed not to slide around on your seat. Fits all motorcycle installs in seconds and clean. Yep. Easily cleans and yep. Helps to dampen those vibrations with plenty of models to choose from. They assure you'll have a comfortable ass when riding. Head over to the Law Binding Biker Store and check out our lineup of butt buffer seat cushions. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Treat your ass with some respect. All right. Let's wind it down here. Finish it up. Closing out the days here. This has been a great trip. I'm envious. I'm envious. I'll tell you that right now. Mm-hmm. Also, if you're ever in a telly ride, make sure you go to the Smugglers Union Brewery. That where we were at? That the one? Yeah. yeah Dude, yeah. that was a cool Good brewery. place. Yeah. Good. Delicious Great food. beer. Great beer. Nice. And the server let us keep our drink glasses. They did, yeah. yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a, like a souvenir. Yeah. Well, I yeah. asked. I go, hey, hey, how much are these glasses? <clears throat> I'm like, these are pretty cool like glasses. I like their logo, Smuggler Union Brewery. And uh, she's like, oh, they're like eight bucks. Okay, cool. Like, can you just add one to my bill? I'll just take this one. She's like, ah, whatever. You can just have it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Unlike the paddle we didn't get from Sturgis, just the broken paddle. Yeah, right. And we could so have, we could have had the. Paddle. Yeah, you, you we just forgot. You to didn't ask. do it, dude. So it's pretty funny That's too. It's like me. I'm. Uh, would have been right here on this wall. It could have. <laughs> yeah. No shit. I was like a beer and a half in, and uh, me and Squirt we're, we're about on pace with each other, and and we uh, we say a beer, maybe maybe a beer and a half tops, and I'm like. Does uh, alcohol affect you differently at elevation? And somebody's like, oh, yeah, it does. And I'm like, oh. yeah, no shit. Because it's like, I'm getting a little buzzed after yeah. <laughs> you know, and, a beer. And, and you also got to figure, too, these beers that they had there, they were pretty strong alcohol content. Mm-hmm. I think the IPA I had, the first one was like eight. Oh, yeah, and nice. Then I had a stout and it was like 12. Oh, yeah, so, geez, Louise. Well, no wonder. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> mine were normal. Yeah. Your one. The first one a you had was like a was like a seven one. Everything they had up there was like super high. Yeah. I think their lowest one was like a six five, and it was like a pilsner. Yeah. Wow! But apparently, it affects you more at altitude. So, yeah, my <laughs> head was tingling. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So we, we yeah, after that we went and, we went and walked around uh, went and walked around town, blew up mm-hmm. our city toilet or two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not I. <laughs> not, not I. There's Mouse and John. Mm-hmm. I plead the fifth. Fifth. <laughs> fifth. So immature here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yep, so from immature. Moab, not much to talk about here, Bikeholics. Back to um, Twin Falls, we've yeah, been through from, there. It's always uh, a spot that yeah. ends up on somewhere in between. And I threw it out there just because I want to go back to that uh, that brewery. Uh, what was the name of the brewery there? Do you remember? Yeah. Kodo Brewing Company. Kodo? The one where yes. Cowboy K-O- Dance. K-O-D-O, right? K-O-T-O. 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 So, uh, I'd looked up what was going on that night and they ended up having a couple uh, comedians uh, going on. Oh yeah. Um, we had the dueling good. pianos a couple years ago. Yeah. Remember I was that? hoping that's that was they, what was going to be there. And they still, they still come down all the time. That? I asked the uh, waitress, I go to the, are they still coming here? She goes, Oh yeah. She goes, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, she goes, I really like them. She goes, you know, it's a certain act, right? They do kind of do the same type yeah, of right, thing right, every right. time. And she goes, but it's still fun for me to watch every time. Yeah. So, and it was kind of funny. I'd put out on Facebook uh, cause I was kind of documenting the trip as we went on facebook and one of my buddies like no shit he's like you're coming to twin falls he's like i'm in twin falls oh and so i said hey we're gonna be here tonight we're having dinner and then you know this uh comedian's going on so he came down and met us uh bought us a drink down at uh, Kodo brewing uh like i said watched some the comedy show and whatnot and then um nothing uh, spectacular there uh twin falls and then that was 500 what the hell was that with moab uh yeah 450 miles there and then the next yeah. day was uh from twin falls home and you're looking at uh mm. just shy of 600 miles for to me. get back to your guys's neck yeah. of the woods yeah so, nothing uh not spectacular we just kind of picked up lunch along the way to subway north of uh salt lake city and john no, 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 indian john that, peeled off probably that, and that was crazy about salt lake city right so uh speed limit going through salt lake i think is like at 70 and we're cruising along at like 85 ish and we're getting ran over. Oh, yeah. We've been through there a few times. Yeah, it's always yeah. like that on that yeah. freeway. Yeah, and so we're, you know, 
if you ride smart, you know, on a bike, you try to stay far left, far right, yeah. whatever the heck. So you don't have people coming in and out of you. And we're far left. And I'm tr- I always try to go just a little bit faster than the pace of traffic. Mm-hmm. So I ended up on my damn cruise set at like 90 miles an hour. And that is at the pace of traffic. And there are still people yeah. going around us. You it's know? like California. <laughs> yeah. Some of those. They too. move down yeah. there. And you're looking at a six lane road going through a downtown major metropolitan area. Yep. And they are flying. That is a crazy. Awesome. The, the times we've been around there. Yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, crazy. otherwise just bomb into home, man. That was, uh, that was a trip. Great, uh, great trip. Uh, boy, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to wrap that up, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, good friends. Pretty cool. Just be able to call some people or put out mm-hmm. on group me. Hey, who's interested in going to get some guys pipe up? Say, hell yeah. You know, I'll ride with you. Yeah. That's a, a trip. I've got it saved in ride planner. That would be one I would like to do in the future as a group. You know, I mean, I know you've done a lot of it, but, uh, Hey, some of those trips are fun twice, right? Yeah, well, so, that's the thing is, you know, you get into, uh, I've been looking a lot. At, like, we're doing Southern. Cali again. It's been seven years or six years. So, yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, I would like to go one of these years and just go do like a Southern Utah trip. There's so much area mm. down there that you can ride that I've been watching um, uh, some other groups that go down and r- have ridden some of that area. And uh, there's roads down there with just nobody driving them absolute beautiful scenery and there is just nobody on those roads i think you could spend quite a bit of time down in uh, southern utah of just riding roads yeah. that uh, are just county roads and see some spectacular stuff i think we should do that one i like years. it i like it awesome episode two of two. Oh yeah another hour and a half bro was it yep right yeah, out about we're worried about filling one one episode and that never happens no i'm glad we bagged out for two of two yeah. so thanks for sticking it out these guys got a ride home still we uh love our patron members we want to get you benefits of course we want to get to know you better uh but uh hey whatever reason you can't become a patron member right now you want to leave a flat donation of course we never bought <laughs> not a flat donation scott lang left one for us mm-hmm Brian Swanson of Eagle, Nebraska, and Randy Miller of Pembroke Pines, Florida. Thank you so much. He left a substantial donation after asking a question on our website contact form because we answer a lot of questions, and that definitely helps us out when you guys do that. So lawbindingbiker.com forward slash donate is how they did that. Don't forget, guys, real quick, we are carrying a bunch of new stuff, always adding stuff to the store. Um, You can now get your lube oil filter, oil change kits, AMS oil, and twin power oil, and You can get them kind of like a kit with a filter and all that kind of stuff, guys. Available right in the Law Abiding Biker store. And a lot of you, we appreciate. We've seen you've been taking advantage of that and purchasing those kits from our store. Big Daddy Kane will get you hooked up, get it shipped out. Him and Goat down there in the Law Abiding Biker store. Keep checking back to the store. That's one of a ton of things. We're going to continue to ramp things up here in 2021. Always add new products, new categories and stuff like that. So thank you for your support. We simply couldn't do it without your financial support, guys. Hey, whatever reason, there's another way you can support us that I haven't talked about in a while, and that's rate us. No matter what podcast platform you're listening on, of course, iTunes or Stitcher Radio, um, we're over at, uh, well, we're on all the uh, uh, iHeartRadio, Pandora, all that kind of stuff, guys. Anywhere you go, we are there for you. And uh, Spotify, we're on there too. Anyways, rate us. Give us a five-star rating. So more bikers around the world can find us and join this thing we call the biker revolution. Thanks for being here, guys. 